So I'm going to try and bring a bit more positivity to you because what this circumstance has allowed me to do is to get an uh, understanding of the law itself and how it applies through my circumstances. Now, before I go any further, what I must say is I'm not a solicitor. I'm not a professional of the law. Um, and so if, you, if you're going to go down the route, specifically with a mental health act to try and help a family member, um, as I've said already, deal with it in the family first and create an intervention plan, but then perhaps consider taking legal advice um, first, uh, because you're about to enact the law, or maybe the constable or whoever is about to enact the law on that person. And to all my intents and purposes of my understanding so far, when you place that person under that jurisdiction, they lose all legal rights. Um, so, you know, approach with caution if you're advised to do so, because it can cause more distress to the person. But what the Mental Health Act allows you to do, um, if you can get your minds around it as to how the law works, it's a very good example of, of the processes and applications of the law specifically with a warrant to a person in society because in order to act to section 135 there has to be an application of warrant to a justice of a peace. Um, it's very much not a case of like just a local authority or a doctor coming to deal with the circumstances. Um, so that's the first piece of advice that is consult as a family, have an agreement and then take some legal advice um, to make sure that all grounds are covered and definitely don't take my ideas as as um, a route to a so solution. This is only through my learning process after um, for, for, for finding out of certain circumstances. But before I go into explain what I've learned and what I've understood um, through through my own my own leisure, if you like, or curiosity is um, prior to like the law itself uh, being the mental health act, like how does this process work once you, if you take that decision through a family um, in terms of like the very basics of the law? What has to happen if you read through section 135 and, and, and again, like educate yourself, never make a decision when it comes to to something like this, make sure you've asked thorough questions because if people make mistakes, it can have drastic effects when it comes to the mental stability of another person in particular, or any other kinds of application of law within there. So under section 135, if you read through it, you, you learn that a warrant has to be issued. Um, and the warrant is only before everything is simply for the removal of that person to a place of safety. Now, this process generally applies from my understanding to any application of a warrant. Um, and it's where it opens a really interesting understanding of like, how does the law work? And how does it function? Um, so the warrant issued or taken, whenever it's done, they have to go to a magistrate's court um, and if you try to break it down to the simple process, what you're going to do as a family is you're going to essentially, from, from what I can see, is you're going to say, we, we, can't, we want to hand authority to somebody else to act on our family member's behalf and for them to have an authority. So that's, that's the next thing to consider. Um, and then, I don't know if this applies to all, all places, but that the warrant will be applied or in the name of a local authority or an, or an agency acting on that behalf. So I won't say where I'm from, but in my case, it's the, it's the local council, um, not the NHS or, or, or health services. And once you understand the mechanics of the law, you can understand the reasoning for this local health authority. I mean, like, sorry, um, NHS doctors and practitioners and um, groupings, they are doctors, they're not legal teams. So it has to be placed into an authority that can work within 
the application of the mental health act um, and so this starts a very simple process of like um, prior to um, the person being assessed which is applicable in, in, in many different aspects of law um, a warrant has to be applied through uh, a magistrate or some form of court service or some form of jurisdiction to bring the act of the mental health act or probably anything else if you're dealing with a warrant um, to, to, to warrant the cause um, and that process is all, always generally the same grounds of application are given to a magistrate and brought before what is known as a justice of the peace um, and to try and make it easy to understand once if you're dealing with it as a family member you're going to speak to an authority and get their advice and then they're going to go and and approach the court or the magistrates as a justice of the peace and say we need to apply the law we've got permission from the family to do this um, so it's very important to consider is, is that coherence there between all family members and I, I would suggest always consider that, that if there's not a, a balance there um, because it only takes one person really in a family to be able to to do that from from what I've understood from my, my experience and if you don't have agreement on the core family members, then that immediately causes conflict within the family and can cause a lot of stress within a family. So make sure that that's coherent. Um, there should be discussions with that local authority there as to like the circumstances of the person. They should be asking relevant questions and you yourself take your opportunity to ask questions about their background. Make sure everything's checked and balanced after you've taken that legal advice, which I would recommend. And there are plenty of, of solicitors and, and, and law companies that deal with this as a specialist. Um, the, if you're dealing with a local authority or the acting authority, they, they go to the magistrates and, and, and with all warrants, it's a very simple process. You go to a magistrate, you say, I'd like to enact something or for, or, or to, to, to apply for a warrant for this reason and if you pick, break it into like a, a structure that you can apply to any situation, it's then a question of like, well, what aspect of the law do you want to apply with application of a warrant? So then that person will go and say, it's the Mental Health Act 1983, um, Section 135. I'd like a warrant to enter the premises of this person based on, on what's written in the law. And they have to provide what is known as reasonable grounds now that's very important is that which i'll cover like maybe later on you have to discuss as a family your reasoning for this basically and ensure that that's passed on and make sure that those facts are checked or make sure that those people have acted that because that is what that person or it's not even a, a person it's the authority the acting authority and the applicant of the acting authority that, that states those reasonable grounds there. Um, and if you, I, I would suggest, and again, always consult with like legal advice, make sure those reasonable grounds are placed in there um, so that when you want to explain it to the person that you're acting on behalf of, um, the process that you're going through, because you can't see any other reason other than this, um, you can say, look, we thought we understood like the, the, the process that you go through um, in accordance of the law. Um, and, and we gave the authority very good reasons and made sure that those reasons were passed on. And uh, we're sorry that we had to do this for you, family member, but like, you know, you left us no choice. We've gone through all these, these different processes here. And that there gives that person a, a peace of mind that you that you've not jumped the gun, you might say, or or things have been checked. Um, um, so that, that, yeah, there has to be an application for the warrant that's made uh, that in order for them to act on behalf. They, as with all warrants, 
will take legal should take legal consultancy as to what they have to do. The process of applying for a warrant is the same. But then what happens is under the 135, as, as far as I can interpret, you've got section one, which first states I, um, conclusions of reasons, I, I might say. Um, the warrant, as with other warrants, is placed in the authority of the constable, not the local authority. And that is why we have police officers um, accompanying doctors uh, and psychiatrists or whoever that comes to the door. And there's a specific set of people that have to come. But the reason that the police officers come, if, you, if you've been subject to this and you're concerned, is because when you go through that process of law with warrants, it can only go into the authority of the constable to execute the warrant. And the warrant itself is as for what as it states there. And it will give a response as to what can be warranted to that police officer or constable. And the guidance is there within section one. It says, if need be by force, any premises, so they have to state the premises, but it might not, it, doesn't, it actually states there later on as you interpret it, that it doesn't have to be the case. Um, and the key thing is if thought fit, um, from my understanding, to remove to a place of safety with a view to making an application. So the Mental Health Act hasn't actually been applied to that person. The warrant is issued to enact that person and remove that person to a place of safety under the um, justice issued through warrant to the police officer to enact that warrant. And something that should that, that that should be stated is that in that moment there, that police officer does have the option not to enact that warrant. I might suggest from my own my own my own personal circumstances, because doctors are are advised and mental health professionals are there accompanying them. Um, and a police officer is not trained in that, he's the acting authority of that warrant. And so if you want to, if, if you are in that, ever find yourself in that position there, that's your point to challenge it. Uh, the authority is with the police officer, not the mental health practitioners at that time, or the doctors, they're there to accompany um, because it has to be enacted in accordance of the law with warrants. The officer has the right to remove you and put you to a place of safety, but he also, by interpretation of what I can see, has the option of making other arrangements. And the important thing to consider as well, if you find yourself in that situation, is how it defines that as a place of safety. The hospital is not necessarily considered. Section 7 considers that further. So it might be a case that you um can state and it would it would be up to the officer at time because he's the person in charge at that time and why there's two officers there one acting as a, i would imagine one acting as a witness to the other to make sure that it's executed in accordance of the law um and a way to understand this is that um you have the court which is where you court the law the magistrate or the justice of the peace enacts justice of the peace he then issues warrants with cause based on reasonable cause of reason given to him that he's convinced. Effectively, he's the mind there um, because what the Mental Health Act demonstrates is that the law can't state what the mind is. And I'll highlight that a little bit further um, and why mental health professionals are defined and put in that position and all these systems are put in place. In essence, to try and give safeguarding to a person uh, for his duty of care in accordance of the law so that people can't just go making phone calls and reporting people. Um, but I feel that this is not very much well explained to people. Um, 
So yeah, and the, the approved medical practitioner will be accompanied by a, red, a registered medical, uh, sorry, the approved mental professional is accompanied by a doctor, which is referred to as a medical professional in the law. And the officer has the right to enter the premises and remove that person by force if necessary. But by all understanding, which I, I leave open to you, he has the option then to turn around to the doctors and the medic, because he's not trained, to say, is this necessary? Do we have to do this? No, I, I don't believe that a warrant, and I, I'm still looking at this, and it would be something to ask a solicitor perhaps, is because a warrant is issued, does it necessarily have to be executed? Um, because police officers act in policy of the law, um, and in all circumstances, there may have been mistakes made. That's something that I'll be I'll, I'll, I leave for you to, to, to consider yourself. Um, but that's like the basic process of any kind of warrant. Um, it goes into the police officer himself. Then, if that police officer deems it necessary to the place of safety, um, being the hospital or wherever, which is is um, status in a section one three five then you can be taken away. But there are options in um, that section which are stated, which define what a place of safety is, which is something else to consider. Um, you don't, maybe perhaps if you, if there's certain circumstances, um, I can't think of any, any there, and you just need to return a person to a place of safety being his home and you're liaising with these authorities, you can question that aspect yourself. Um, there's no, what you might say, the law is not definitive in action um, um, because it's written on a piece of paper and it always requires interpretation. And um, that's why we have these systems such as a solicitor to solicit the law um, and a jury to write over it and a judge to preside over it. I like to think of the judge or the justice of peace as Gandalf on the bridge of Lord of the Rings. He's there, he's the protector. It requires a human mind to, to do this. And it's not possible within the structure of the law to, um, which is a very good example to look at, as to look at these basic fundamentals of like, what you might say is, is um, a process to be followed in accordance of the law. When you choose to do this in the case of a mental health act. Um, so yeah, just to, just to go over it again, you're gonna hand over authority essentially is what I can see because all legal, there's no right to appeal over a section 135 um, once you find yourself in there unfortunately and you have to if the officer deems it necessary you have to go and the family likewise I would imagine that should it come to the point um, it might be very and there are cases in history where people have been placed through mental health authority um, and found it very difficult to get out of that system there because Essentially, you're not considered to be within capacity to think within reason to liaise with these people there. Um, and so that's like the that's a crucial point to consider. Then understand the basics of what's going to happen next. The person isn't necessarily going to go straight for an assessment. A warrant is issued to remove that person to a place of safety. And it defines within the law that what that is considered to be, but then by all intents and purposes to what I can see, because the authority is placed within the officer, it doesn't necessarily have to be executed in place. You choose how you want to take that. That's only my interpretation of this, but try to consider all those basic aspects there as to like the process that you're going to go through. Is this the first choice? How much distress is it going to cause to that person seeing two police officers? If necessary, removing a person of your family by force, it's not simply a question of going to some doctors because in the question of a local authority, you're not actually dealing with a medical practitioner. You are dealing potentially with a social worker which is labelled as a mental health professional 
And the reason for that is, as far as I can see, is that there's no set reason to be able to define within the law the mind, states of mental health, all different kinds of diagnoses. And so that person acts as an authority to say to the magistrates or the justice of the peace, this is necessary and these are my reasons of cause, through reasonable cause, for this to be applied to this person. And what's important to know is that term cause, it doesn't mean definitive, it gives a sense of direction. There's always an option for all these people here in these circumstances. And I would recommend potentially or suggest from my own experience, ensure that somebody is there to question these things and assist that person there in that circumstance. Don't leave that person there with two police officers um, escorting them out of the house to a hospital. Um, if you're interested more of what I can see for the, what is considered to be a place of safety, that's covered in sec subsection 7, which applies in three different scenarios, specifically if a person is living alone. Um, it states that... Uh, A house or flat is not considered a place of safety unless a person is agrees uh, to use of that as a place of safety, which is always open to interpretation. But what that means is that that can be offered to the person. I believe that what that is, is like if you find a scenario where a person is wandering around the streets and he needs returning to his home, it might not be necessary to to you to, to take him to the hospital all the time but that is how it states it within the law there please as i said again don't take my words as truth i'm not a legal advisor on this matter but it seems very very easy to understand as to how that works and why an approved mental health professional and not my medical practitioner is put in that place to check certain things and make sure it is ne absolutely necessary because in some cases it might be that as a family member or, or a friend you are concerned but it must always be respected the fact that these people are supposed to be the people in authority that feel it necessary um, there if you've been subject to this there are other ways that you can then challenge that later on um, what I would say to you from my own experience is if you're confident that there's not really an issue and you can just roll with it, um, go through the assessment, try not to hold it against people. It can be very distressing when, you, when, you, when you've had this happen to you and then go and check these facts and read through that section there. Um, once that happens then, that then moves on to part two, the application of um, the Mental Health Act for assessment or whatever causes that that medical practitioner, uh, mental health professional deems necessary once you arrive there. Um, to all intents and purposes, as far as I can see, it is not necessary for that to be set out as an absolute sense of direction. The warrants that is issued only that, it is issued for that only is to enter Oh, I don't know about other people, but in, 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 um, in, in how can I put this? In the case of what I've seen so far, um, to enter the premises to search and remove the person through the authority of the police officer. Um, so yeah, do check that there. Um, what I will also cover later on this is, is that important aspect that I can see is that that person that is defined as a mental health professional, if you're dealing with a local authority, I'll double check this later, do check who you are speaking to and what their background is. As far as I can see so far, the mental health professional is different within the definitions of the law and the terms of the law as what's considered a medical practitioner and why when it's placed within warrant, both those are labeled and a doctor and social worker perhaps turns up if it's in the local authority. 
please do check that there. Um, you may not be speaking to a doctor or most likely won't be speaking to a doctor. Check the background. They do have to go through certain training processes and this can be found within the regulations that cover this, that they have to apply every eight years for that certificate there. But, you know, I must stress you're dealing with possible distress of a person who is your family. Everything needs to be checked because it can have drastic consequences later as to what I've heard of stories of other people. Um, there's other sections of the Mental Health Act that are considered, but this is specific way uh, to do with like if you're acting as family. Um, but like I said, those, that's just what I've managed to deal and what I can um, understand. Go and always check with a solicitor once before you make that final choice.